I now follow you on Twitter. I followed you back. I know. I don't want to blur the journalistic lines. I only want to say you get what I'm doing. And, and the entire point of this movie is people finding people who understand them. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm going to get like emotional talking about this, but like, you know, I'm Nate and your aunt Heidi. Like, you know, when you see somebody for what they're trying to say, that's, um, that's a beautiful thing. And I appreciate you. Oh, it's my pleasure. I was, your movie made me cry today, by the way, this morning I was watching it and brought tears to my eyes. And I thought that the Heidi Nate relationship was beautiful. Thank you. And you made Lisa Kudrow's role so touching. Well, she, she brought half of it, you know, with Lisa, you kind of, you hire Lisa Kudrow and then you get out of the way, but she was so, <laughs> she was so my dream casting, right? Cause I'm of an age where like, I grew up with her. She was in my living room every Thursday. Um, and, 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 you know, there's a theme in the movie where she's sort of her nephew, Nate's hero. And I have to say, it's like in real life, never meet your heroes unless they're the best. And Lisa, <sighs> Kudro brought all of her Kudro to set every day and was just the most gracious and joyful. And she really wanted to make a movie that said the things that we wanted to say with this. So thank you for getting it. Oh, it was just beautiful. And one of the, you know, this movie has a lot of layers. And one of the things it also addresses is the realities of being an actor. Yes. Her character and through Nate. Yeah. Uh, how was it oh, doing the audition process for this? I'm sure you had a lot of, a lot of good kids. Could, you can't use everybody. It's so ch challenging, right? You know, uh, um, I was rejected so many times as a kid when I would audition for things. And I brought all of that with me. You know, because you're a writer and you're on YouTube that a lot of the things that feel like setbacks in your past, you're able to bring into the future as like plot points. And so um, I saw like 500 boys for the role of Nate. Wow. Kids with like incredible TV credits, amazing agents, they'd starred in movies. But nobody had the thing that Ruby has, which is um, he's the real deal. He's saying defying gravity from Wicked without blinking or apologizing. And I was like, when I was 13, I would have sung that Elphaba song. He is me. I am Nate. He is Nate. He needs to play Nate. And, uh, and I'm really proud of him. And by the way, like I saw 500 boys for Nate and I saw like two young ladies for Libby and Aria Brooks walked in and like walked out with the role. Oh, that's fantastic. You cast it so well. Thank you. I was I really lucky. It Thank was fantastic. You. you know, you. I also really, you know, when you sent out the screener, you had that intro that you made. And I really related to it because my mother's from Pittsburgh and left for New York City. Your kid, do you know yeah. what part of Pittsburgh? I'm just curious. Baldwin. Baldwin. I know Baldwin. <laughs> That's really cool. Oh, that means a lot to me. I'm so glad you had a little family intersect there. Oh, yeah. I called her up. We're going to watch your movie together when it comes on Disney Plus. And I, I, said, I said, I couldn't, but it's so great. I think a lot of people can relate to your story from all different areas. And I was wondering if you've been back to Pittsburgh. Yeah. So I went back on a book tour with Better Nate Than Ever um, some years ago. And then I recently, my hometown theater uh, troupe, Center for Theater Arts, um, brought me back as an alumni, an alum, and I gave a little speech and met the new students. Um, and then, you know, Pittsburgh, it's where Rob Marshall's from and all sorts of sort of surprising theater people come from this town that we think of as like a steel town with sports teams. <laughs> But like, we've got dance class too. So yeah, I get back to Pittsburgh. It's a great town. Oh, I love Pittsburgh. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Are you in New York right now? I am. What a great view, man. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sometimes the sun is like a James Bond villain coming yeah. through the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Also, you know, I, I have to ask you because it's a big conversation right now yeah. about how to talk to kids, kindergarten to third grade about LGBT. And I thought you just did a wonderful job. I think every child should watch your movie. What would you say to people who aren't getting it about LGBT kids and that discussion? Oh, great question. What would I say to people who aren't getting it? I'd say um, all people, I think want the same things, which is we want love and acceptance and we want yeah. to find people who encourage us to step into our light. Oh, and that's so, beautiful. you know, we're, we're more alike than we are different. Mm -hmm. and, and I would also say, um, 
there's kids like Nate in every school, in every community in the world. And to pretend that that's not true is to make people feel more alone, more scared, more afraid, more confused. And so I hope what this movie does, if it sneaks up on people a bit and they discover it on Disney Plus, is I hope it gives Nates across the world hope that they'll find their people. And I hope it gives everyone else the reminder that um, uh, we all have dreams and, uh, and, 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 and we all wanna be loved. And that's the universal um, theme. I also wanna tell you, you know, cause you wrote this as well, uh, by the way, your first big directing thing, you can't tell. You nailed oh, it. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so it, much. It was great. Thank you. But, thank you. you know, I thought that Nate had so many wonderful qualities and mm -hmm. I don't want to have any spoilers, but towards the end of the movie in particular, his compassion mm -hmm. was really a, a wonderful quality. Thank you. I have found that theater people, um, uh, there's something like really emotional about us. Like we're drawn to big music and big emotions and big feelings. And when you try on the role of somebody else, you literally walk in your, their shoes. And as a result, artists and creative people and actors, I think have some of the biggest hearts on the planet. And certainly Ruby Wood um, brings those qualities to life every day on screen and off. You know, I never thought of that. That's really great about actors already walking in other people's shoes. So having more compassion. Yeah, I think you, you're, you're saying the lines of somebody else. And in doing that, you're getting into someone else's head. And so you're starting to do the thing I wish more people did, which is see something from the other person's perspective. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, you said that. And I love that line, the way you closed your opening uh, for the intro for the screener, where you said there's always a seat always at room. your kid's table. Yeah. It's that true, you know, it's true. And, and, and it's funny because everything that got me picked on in middle school gets me paid now. You know, all of the things I got pushed down for and pushed into lockers for and made fun of by, even by teachers, I now look at those as um, the inspirations for all of my storytelling, High School Musical, Better Nate Than Ever. Um, it's about underdogs who are just trying to find their wolf pack. That's fantastic. All right, so last question. I'm getting the one minute mark. Favorite musical? Ah, um, ah, ah, oh my gosh. You have to pick. It's too hard. <laughs> uh, uh, it's too hard. I mean, like, I still love Sweeney Todd. Sorry, that's such a mm -hmm. random answer, but the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, that music is so, but I will say West Side Story, I've watched it like six times on Disney Plus. Oh, the new one, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like currently I'm obsessed with it. So, you know, ask me on a different, this is also what a theater kid is. We just love all of our musicals too much. We can't choose our favorite, Grace. Oh, I love that. It was so nice to meet you. A real pleasure. Thank you for getting it and thank you for your time. So I just asked Tim, so now it's your turn. What's your favorite musical? <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Uh, my my favorite musicals. I have a lot because the I just like Broadway in general. Um, but I I love Hamilton and I love Little Shop of Horrors and I love Wicked, all the classics. Um, for me, I also love Hamilton and I love Dreamgirls. Oh, fantastic! Great choices. I love it. Now, <laughs> a lot, speaking of acting, a lot about this movie is about auditioning. And Ruby, you have a theater background, but this is your first movie TV credit. Yes. What was it like going through that process? Um, well, uh, so I, I got I got the first audition. I had to I had to do a scene and I had to sing a song, and then I got a callback, and then I got another callback, and then I got another callback, and I did about a month of callbacks. So it was it was definitely like a longer callback process than theater, where it's usually like you get your audition, then you get your first callback, and then the final one, and then you know if you're in the show or not. But there there was a lot of callbacks, so like the the team could really get to know who we were. And um, by the time it was uh, narrowed down to me and Aria, I think it's it was just a match made in heaven. It's it was it was great. I see you still have your impressive manicure from the premiere. Oh, yes. Thank you. I'm wearing it to the New York City premiere, so I haven't taken it off yet. Oh, that's great. Did you both have you look great today, too, Aria? Did you guys have thank a great you. time at the premiere? Yes. Oh my gosh, it was so fun. Yes. Like just being there, seeing the movie and seeing the people who worked on it was truly amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, you know, you're both you're both actors. 
uh, um, Aria, I hear your audition went very well. You know, Tim said he cast you right away. Uh, you know, what would you, what advice would you give to other kids your age who are hoping to get into showbiz? Both of you, what advice would you give? Um, I, I feel like I would say, um, first off, authenticity, that's a theme in this movie actually, but like being authentic um, and making sure this is something that you truly want to do. It's going to get hard at times. Um, it's, it has challenging moments, but as long as you know, this is what you want to do. This is your dream. Just like Nate in the movie, he faced so many obstacles, but he kept going because this was his dream to be on Broadway. Um, so I feel like if this is what you want to do and it's something that you truly want to do, you can stick it out. How about you, Ruby? Do you have any advice? I, yeah. So I, I, I agree with Aria that, that you, that you have to be yourself. And if this is something that you love, then you just got to keep working for it. And you also have to have the mindset that it's, it, it will get hard and, and it will, and it will crush you and push you down if you let it. But as long as you, you know, that the right thing will happen when it's supposed to happen, then, then that'll get you through your hardest days. Oh, that's great. I like that. I, you know, that's very good. That's actually, you guys gave very good advice. <laughs> now that's also a great segue into, I love that both of your characters that you play have such self-confidence. Yeah. You know, what would you say to kids who aren't, you know, not necessarily interested in acting, but are having a tough time in school? Cause you know, uh, you know it's, it's, it's becoming very difficult. Social media makes things even harder. Yeah. What would you say to those kids? Um, uh, Aria will probably have a better answer than I do because I've been homeschooled my entire life. So I've had a very different relationship with school. Um, but, but I'd say it, like really, it really helps to find that like a support system, finding friends who understand you and who will support you and, and love you no matter what, um, is really important to, to get you through your hardest times. Because if you, if you don't have someone you can go to, to like whatever it is to 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 vent to cry to like just just talk to then 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 life will be a lot harder what do you I think Aria? um well i've been in public school or like private school whatever it was all my life um and i'm currently in it so i feel like the biggest advice that i could give is just like I know confidence and self-confidence can be hard at times. I know firsthand, because although I feel like I'm a lot more confident now, it, it's been a journey and it still is a journey, but I think it's about taking all the little moments and just going step by step. You're not gonna be exactly who you wanna be right now. I remember um, what Tim told That's me. That's amazing advice. <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> what Tim told me right before, or right after we finished filming the movie and I was about to go, into high school, I was super excited. He was like, don't peak in high school. And I think that's stuck with me because it's like, and I, I think he meant it halfway as a joke, but he was being so serious. Like, don't try and get everything in now. Take it step by self. Wow, what? Take it step by self. What? Oh my God, take it step <laughs> by step and you're going to find yourself. Oh my God, okay. Well, that's great, it was worth the wait. <laughs> so the final thing I wanna ask you is that you guys got to shoot some scenes in Disney's New Amsterdam theater. Yes. How yes. was it being in there? It was, it was amazing. Like I, being able, because, because I'm such a theater nerd, being able to go and film on a Broadway stage was just like mind boggling to me. I, it was, it was such an incredible experience and really just getting to film in all the places because, uh, because everything was shut down for COVID we, we could, we could film in so many more places that, that like normal movies and shows wouldn't be able to use because um they were they were all so empty so it was it was it was really a, a, like a blessing in disguise because we got to go and experience so many things did you, right, did you yeah. have my time in the theater aria yeah i love the new amsterdam theater it was so cool to actually be there and we got to go inside the scene of the outside what was kind of interesting about that scene was that they put up the lilo and stitch the musical posters on the uh -huh. outside of it and i remember um mark Spinelli, our dialogue coach he told us he was like i heard people are calling the new amsterdam theater trying to get tickets for lilo and stitch yeah. sorry guys <laughs> but you can watch better night than ever disney plus April first so <laughs> But, well, you're both wonderful, and I'm sure you're, you're both far from peaking. I think you're both great. 
Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. You too.